So a few people have asked me about this one, and there are just two things I want to say about it. The first thing is, when you're doing it by T results, okay, and yes, I have mentioned this informally, but just like it is for solving trig identities or solving equations or that kind of thing, you, have, you can be prescribed to do a particular integral by T results, right? Because we're trying to see, do you understand how all this fits together? Do you know where this um, dt on dx comes from? Like how to get it in back in terms of T after you get it in terms of trig functions in terms of x, right? Being able to do that is kind of the important skill. And then it turns back into, all right, so now it's a, a regular old algebraic substitution and off you go, okay? So it can be prescribed. There's the first thing I want to do. Um, so so don't, don't shortcut this. I highly advise against like doing this part in your head and just kind of cramming it in because there are so many ways, and even myself I've experienced this, where you can be almost right. <laughs> you can be almost right, but then you'll be off by like, you know, it'll be root three instead of root five or something like that. And short of, which I'm about to show you, short of going back and differentiating, you're like, what, what went wrong? You might not even know anything went wrong. It just looks like it just works, okay? So doing this properly will help you ensure you nail this line down, like we know how critical this line is, and then kind of everything proceeds from there, okay? So I've mentioned that. Secondly, you get to this answer here, okay? Now, it's tempting to look at that and think, okay, there's a um, 10 inverse, and there's 10, can I go further here? Because sometimes we should, like we've seen, for instance, if you get out of partial fractions, you get two log things. Well, clearly it's advantageous to combine them into one. Can we do anything with this? Now the answer is, in simple terms with the tools that we've got in a reasonable amount of time, not really, okay? The reason why is that if we had something like this, your tan inverse of 10, whatever, right? We've seen how to deal with this, and thankfully, because of the way tan is, it's got its um, tan inverse, its domain is all wheel of x, and you know, the range here is all wheel y, so you can get something nice here that will simplify out. But, it's simply this coefficient here that complicates things. As we know, it's not just as simple as, oh, there's a one on root five here. I guess that means I can combine it some way in here. Those are opposite things, aren't they? This is going to be, whatever's happening in here is adjusting the frequency, yes? And this is adjusting the amplitude, okay? So even though those are connected, they are quite distinct concepts, okay? So therefore, there's not a nice, neat way to just go whoop and then put them in there to convert them into something like this. So therefore, you're basically done at this point, which maybe you breathe a sigh of relief. You're like, thank goodness, I don't have to go any further. And you can prove to yourself, as I did, like I've been doing this for a while now, and I still feel as though integration by parts really feels like magic. Right? Like you get to something and you're like, whoop, really? Like uh, once you've done integration by parts or use a substitution like this, you're like, oh, okay. I didn't really expect that, but let's see what happens. And if you're careful with it, you make sure you don't screw up your chain rule, right? It just sort of comes out beautifully in the wash. You're like, cool, it, um, it works, okay? So I would recommend every time you do either integration by parts or using a substitution like this, which ends up with something counterintuitive, you can't immediately see, oh, of course, of course it's 2 on root 5, 10, inverse 1 on root 5, 10, inverse 2, all right? Anytime you see that, just go ahead, test. It's worthwhile just to flex your differentiation muscles, especially when you look at this, you're like, do you see how I've strung this together? There's that 2 on root 5 that came out the front. What does this part represent? What's that? That's the derivative of the inside function, which has the 1 on root 5 just hanging out there. Tan turns into sec squared, but there's chain rule here, so the half comes out the front. And then what's this? What's this part? This is the derivative of tan inverse, which is 1 on 1 plus whatever squared. And that, the whatever I have happens to be that whole thing. Okay? So I think it's kind of nice to be able to see how something that looks so disastrous, it comes back to something beautiful and simple. Okay?